There he is. That's a better one too. Oh yes, that's what I'm talking about. Right here, as I flipped it out, it's the biggest one yet. Oh my God. Wow, look at this trout. <laughs> Hola everybody and welcome back to another Chile edition of Addicted Fishing. Today we're sneaking into a muy sucrito lagoon and this looks really cool. It's got a bunch of big logs in it. It's all has a bunch of dead timber in this lake. And we're doing a little versus challenge in between fly fishing and gear fishing. It may be a little mismatch because a lot of these lakes never see anybody gear fishing or using a rooster tail or a spinner or anything like that. So I'm gonna put up head to head fly rod and the gear rod in this here incredible setting. And we're gonna see which one plays the victor. I know there's a couple different species in here. I'm guessing there's rainbows. I'm guessing there's big browns. And these big browns love this wood. So it should be a very interesting episode, you guys. It's been a beautiful one nonetheless. Welcome back to Chile. Let's go have some fun. guide has informed us that a majority of these fish are going to be within all these trees here. They're going to be within the grass and you're pretty much going to see them before you catch them. So I'm going to go sneaky, go in stealth mode. I'm going to go log hopping and go from log to log and see if I can actually spot these fish, which would be super exciting today. So let's give it a shot. Okay, here goes everybody. The first fly fishing cast in Chile. And I'm hung up on my GoPro. Nothing new there. One thing I know about these browns, as you guys have seen throughout these videos, is that they like to chase. They don't like a very slow presentation. They want to chase stuff down and eat it and kill it. So I'm going to make sure to keep that, that mindset while I'm fishing this woolly bugger here today, where it's going to hit the water. Oh, there he was. Second cast of the day. And I missed one. Oh, that was cool. Oh, instant freaking bite too, that was cool. Why didn't he come back for it? There he is, got him, got him. Oh, that's a good one too. Good brown, good brown, good brown town. Oh yeah. First fish on the fly of the trip. Ow! Oh, oh, he's got me in the tree. He's got me in the tree, okay, we're good. You guys, what an incredible setting to be fishing right now. Massive Chilean mountains in the background and beautiful brown trout on the line. Ow, ow. Okay, here he is. Hop down in the water with him. Wow. Holy shnikes, you guys. Hands down, the coolest fish so far of the trip. We've caught some bigger browns on this trip, but nothing quite like this color. Oh my God. What a stunning, stunning freaking fish. They don't get any prettier. All right, thanks for playing little dude. Now that's one, one nice brown for the fly, zero for the spin. Wow, thanks guy. <laughs> Fish number one of the day, and it couldn't be any better. 
This is living right here, everybody. So we just started fishing this fly. It's only been about 10 minutes. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is my goal is gonna be to fish all the way down this bank with a fly, switch to a spinner and see how many more I can get coming back down the other way. I'm gonna give the fly, I'm gonna give the fly the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna make sure that it gets its chance because we don't wanna leave anything out. Flies matter. So we're gonna try the fly for a while first and then I'm gonna switch to the spinning, see if we can find a real giant. So I can already tell a very fun part of today is all these little lanes you have to cast through. It's almost like a, like a casting competition of sorts where I'm getting to sneak around through these trees and like find these little lanes that I can shoot my fly through to get down and get in front of these fish. But then what's gonna be amazing is when we really do hook a giant, trying to fight him in this kind of structure is gonna be very exciting. So let's keep her going. Let's get a different angle on the situation. Oh, oh, dang. He, oh, oh, there he was again. Go, got him, got him, third time was the charm. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that was awesome. That's what trout fishing is all about in a lake like this. Thing schooled me twice. Took the fly, ran with it, oh, missed him. Took the fly, ran with it, missed him. And here we have him. This one didn't get away. Oh, that was so cool. Wow, another beauty. This one looks like a female. Bring it over to you guys. Fish number two of the day. Oh, goodness gracious. Absolutely incredible and such a fun take. All of bugger for the win yet again. Fly fishing is killing it today. I love these brown trout, you guys. Brown trout, like I said before, you guys have heard me say it many times, they are my nemesis. But I think I might have cracked the code. My favorite part of these brown trout, I have to say, is the character on every single one of them's cheek. Every single fish that I've caught has looked completely different. It's almost like a steelhead, uh, something I can relate it to, but fish number two, heck yeah. Ooh, I got a good feeling about this little Gates to Mordor over here. There's all these like dead jagged trees and right in between them, I can smell a giant. That looks good, it looks real good, too good, too good. I'm just having so much fun right now, everybody. This is so cool. Bomber. Talk about a perfect day. Wind at your back, brown trout in the trees, and a cold beer. New log, new opportunities. Saw some fish rolling and feeding over here just a second ago. So I'm trying to start close and use the same mentality I use steelhead fishing, close, middle, far, close, middle, far, as I work through all this stuff. My man Franco has informed me that these fish really love this structure and a lot of times on a clear day and on, a, on this lake in particular he'll actually see every fish he catches and sight fishing to him so we got a little bit of a riff on top of the water today it's going to make it harder to see the fish but nonetheless I'm seeing them rise I'm, they're showing themselves they're kind of giving themselves away a little bit so oh there he was son of a gun gotta get right back in there he's gonna find it close quarters Rambo Rambo style Oh my God, that was the best one yet. Oh, that was a big fish. Well, landed a few, lost a few, having a great time out here. And I think as I've been fishing, I've been trying to decide what I'm gonna do here. And I think what I'm gonna do is fish through all the standing timber in the place that I can actually fly fish. And then I'm gonna switch to the spinning gear and fish the areas that I cannot fish with the fly rod where I'm not gonna be able to cast. So we're gonna see if that effectiveness of the fly rod versus the spinning rod goes hand in hand. I think sometimes it's a better suit to be using a spinning rod. That's why I use both, that's why I love both. Because sometimes fly fishing doesn't work. The other times spin fishing doesn't work. And I'm gonna try both of them here today and see which one works best. So, but before that, it's time for a snack. This looks like a nice lunch spot. Let's see, on the menu today for lunch. It's no surprise, even though we're in another country. Pickles.
And for lunch dessert, one of my favorite candies in South America. I don't know why they don't sell them at home, but they're called Costa Rama. Chocolate de leche. And they are good. Look at these things. They're like the little crumbly, like shaved chocolate, basically. And they just instantly melt in your mouth. Mmm. Mmm. Tastes like Christmas morning. Mmm. Right here, as I flipped it out, it's the biggest one yet. Oh my God. I was just dinking around, you guys. Flipped the dang thing over, just trying to get the line out, and he smashed it. That fish was like 10 feet from me. And it's the nicest one yet. Wow, well, I think fly fishing works in this place. This is the coolest trout yet, oh my God. Look at this thing, totally unexpected. Sometimes I guess it's better to just quit trying. We definitely have proven that over the years. Wow, look at this trout. <laughs> wow, stay with me buddy, stay with me. Well, I think we may have been walking too far out into the lake. Look at this thing. Oh my God. Again, total characteristics on the face. Such a unique looking fish. It's better to be lucky than good sometimes. And that is a proven case. Wow. Thank you, little dude. Such a beautiful fish. Bye, buddy. Stealth, look, he's still right there. Such a cool fish. I have to say, these browns have gotta be my favorite, you guys. I love rainbow trout, but these brown trout, the way they hit, how aggressive they are, and then just the beauty of the colors. Every one is so unique. Sweet, lunch bite. Okay, well it's proven, the fly fishing works. Now it's time to get dirty. Let's grab a rooster tail. I don't wanna do it. Probably a little bit too big a swivel for the setup, but that's okay. It's gonna add a little bit of weight. I'm gonna need some weight to cast. I got the wind in my back, so we'll give it a shot. Well, that was a nice little swim. <sighs> Damn it. Okay, let's see if the swim paid off. Usually, I always say, you gotta put in a little swim, get a little wet, it'll bring you some good luck. I see a giant one right there, I think. I think that's what I see. Okay, moment of truth. Now I've made quite a few casts already. You guys have been fishing for about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes now. Fell in the lake, paid my dues, and guess what? The finner ain't working. This could be one of those unique situations where the fly is yet better than the spinner. I feel like it's a lot of the case sometimes when you fish, ooh, I just saw one. 
when you fish lakes and stuff like this that have a lot of natural a lot of natural feed for these fish obviously these things are growing big and surviving a long long time and for many years off of what's just ready readily available for them to eat here in the lake so sometimes their food doesn't look like a spinner so they don't want the spinner but what i'm hoping for what i'm kind of expecting is maybe to not catch the most with this but just might definitely catch the biggest Ooh, that was it that's where i saw him Oh, there he is. Oh God, that was a good one too. Right here at the bank. Gosh dang it. That was a nicer sized fish. Grab it for just a second. Give me a good head shake, then he came off. to make a little change everyone I was kind of wondering I couldn't really get a good cast in I couldn't get the thing down I switched to a little bit bigger rooster tail and look at this I got the smallest fish of the day <laughs> go figure a beautiful little guy though nonetheless first fish on the rooster tail rooster tail making a comeback cute little guy thank you dude All right, this is looking good. So my technique here, obviously that's the nice part about using the spinning gear in a spot like this is I can use like a clockwise motion as I'm going through and fishing each bit of the, there he is. Oh, dang it. I can use like a clockwise motion as I'm going through and fishing all this structure. I'm going from left to right. I'm fishing absolutely everything I can see in front of me. That's, that's an option, basically. And I'm making about a 10 to 15 foot cast difference each time. I'm moving all the way across and then I'm moving with my feet. So a lot of times I try not to get too focused on trying to cast super far or cover water that is, is you know, uncoverable by casting. And I just use my feet. And even though it's going to take some, some gnarly hiking and slipping and sliding through some stuff, I'm going to be able to actually cover every little bit of, of water structure that I have here in front of me. And hopefully I can show you why I think the rooster tail is just as effective as fly fishing. Here he is. That's a better one too. That's a better one. Oh, he's submarining me. He's submarining hardcore. Haven't got a look at him yet. Oh, that's a really pretty one, you guys. Holy cripes. Oh yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Hog on a log. We're in Brown Town. Oh wow, this one has an incredible stripe down the side of it. Okay, let's see if we can safely do this, you guys. I wanna make sure we safely handle these fish. Cool thing about a brown trout is how old they can be. You know, there's, there's brown trout on record that are probably 10 to 15 years old. These things can live in these lakes forever. Kind of like, kind of like rainbows do. Look at this thing. Wow. It has this incredible like blue stripe. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera but just an absolutely gorgeous stripe down the side of this fish. Beautiful white tips on its fins. Incredible spots. This one has some, some of the most vibrant red spots that I've seen so far. Oh, wow. What a blessing. Okay. Thanks, little guy. Rooster tail for the win. Ow! Nice fish. Let's keep working our way down this bank, see if we can find a bigger one. Okay, hadn't quite completed my clockwise motion here. I was only about to about two o'clock on that one. Let's see what happens as we get a little bit closer to three. Okay, we're almost to three o'clock and we're gonna make a move. on the fall. I don't know if you guys saw that. I literally was reeling, reeling, reeling. That fish smacked it. 
and stopped reeling after about three more cranks, let that thing fall, and he just destroyed it as that thing fell to the, to the bottom of the lake. This might be an even better one too. He's really submarine to me. Wow. Wow. What a neat fish. I swear the deeper, oh, there he goes, he's ripping line. Oh, oh, Bendo, Bendo Rama. Sneak back over here to our landing spot. It's so impressive how strong this fish is for the size. He fights with all his might. Wow. Once again, they just keep getting prettier. Holy shnikes. I love it. Look at that dorsal fin on that fish. The mountains in the background. I love brown trout. Brown trout poking out right here. Okay. Just a special, special fish. Thank you, little guy. Mwah. Have a nice day. See you later. Yeah. That's some big fish so far, everybody. Seems to me both methods work pretty darn good. It's just situational. It's whether you can fish the, the method that you're fishing in the position that you're fishing or in the spot that you're at. Again, I'll say it again, and I'll say it to the day I die. I love all styles of fishing, and I feel like you guys should too. Anybody who loves fishing should love it anyways. There's people that have preferences to the kind of style of fishing they like to do, but I say it's all worth enjoying, and it's all fun. So, rooster tail, fish number two. Okay, we'll start close quarters. I feel like this ledge here is a very good little hunting ground for these fish. I love to fish these little banks on any kind of lake. Whether you're fishing for browns, and rainbows, or anything, these, these super hard cut ledges are the perfect ambush spot for these kind of predator fish. Fish that are going to be eating other, other small fish and insects alike. The insects are going to be coming off the bank, off of those dead wood on the side. Or as well as the little trout that are going to be cruising these little bank lines eating the, the small aquatic life. So, we're going to stick to the ambush zones. Oh, big roll just right here next to us. Missed my cast a little bit, but I'm gonna still be in the vicinity. You should be able to see it. There's quite a bit of viz in this lake. Oh, there he is. Yep, I knew it. I knew he'd see it. I knew he, oh, geez. He's a freaking wild animal. Wow. Super aggressive for how big this fish was. I saw him roll. I made a little splash out there in the middle. I got a cast just in the approximate area that he was, and bam, fish on, and there he goes, quick release. Sweet. Okay, I have a feeling there's a bigger one. Right there. Okay, another perfect example of a great spot to have a spinning rod in your hand. Super heavy brush over top. Some awesome, awesome cover out here in front of us for these fish. Big, deep ledge. See a lot of big logs down here. I'm just gonna keep creeping my way down through here, see if we can find us the giant we've been looking for all day. Oh, there he is. Oh my God, that was a good one. Oh man, oh there he is, he came back for it. Came back for it. Oh yeah, bent up, we're bent up. I was wrong though, it wasn't a good one. I swear sometimes you guys, these little guys are hitting twice as hard as the big ones. The big ones seem to kind of just shoot through and pick up the lure and these littler ones are coming up, smacking it, smacking it, smacking it, and eventually getting hooked once more. I don't think any of us here are ever gonna get tired of looking at these fish. Such a beautiful creature. Nailed it. Perfect cast. There he is. Oh, come on. Let it fall. Real, real, real. Let it fall. Oh, man, he slammed it. Realized it didn't taste too good. It was a little spicy for his taste. Dang. Oh, they're feeding like crazy over there. Better get a little closer. I've been thinking since the minute I got to this lake that this wall would probably have some of the biggest fish. Oh, another one rolled. There's three in like less than 30 seconds that have rolled right there. Let's see. Oh, that's even a bigger one. Let's get over there. 
It is an all out feeding frenzy happening out here right now. Saw a couple of massive blow ups. Most of them have been fairly small, but a couple of those, that was a big one. This is the prime, prime situation to see whether or not the rooster tail can come through in a natural feeding frenzy. Sometimes when it looks too much different from their natural presentation, once again, like I said, over and over, you can have a hard, oh, no. Nope. I'm seeing some of them jump that are pretty small, but then some of these things are huge that I'm seeing splash. Okay. There we go. Oh! Oh my God. That almost yanked the damn rod out of my hands. How that didn't stay hooked. Sometimes it can be extremely imperative to not yank when these fish hit. You gotta let them turn with it. You'll pull it right out of the front of their mouths. Dang it, that was a big fish. Oh, crap. Crap. Something. Some bad word. Guys, I'm definitely seeing a trend here. They're not really going after the spinner. I have a feeling that if I had the right matched hatch, if I had the right bug on and I was fly fishing, that I might be able to get it in there. But then again, I wouldn't be able to cast here. I'd be relying on a roll cast, wouldn't be able to get it as far out. to really work that one. He hit it a bunch of times. Not the one we we're looking for. But I think it goes to show you guys, in a situation such as we've seen already this afternoon, I'm having a really hard time to get these feeding fish to go on the spinner. So let it be known, spinners work when they work, flies work when they work. And this time, the spinner worked. And that time, the spinner worked. Hello everybody, it has been a very fun and exciting video. I hope you guys have learned something. One, being that if you're just a fly fisherman, to try some spin fishing. And if you're a spin fisherman, try some fly fishing, because both can be a lot of fun and very effective in multiple different scenarios. Thanks so much for watching everybody. We'll see you on the next video. You all stay fishy, we'll see you out there.